Hey guys, this is Hyper Hippo back for Capes and Scales, doing another trade review, and I'm here to tell you about when Wolverine gets old and the journey is just beginning. This is Old Man Logan. Wolverine has been at the core of every major X-Men story since his creation in Incredible Hulk 181. He has had some of the bloodiest battles with friend and foe alike. He has survived more gruesome attacks than any other hero. Commonly, his body is mangled only to slowly regenerate from more abuse another day. So the question becomes this, what could make a man like Logan submit to a dark world and be pacified and content with that decision? The answers to this and many more questions can be found inside Old Man Logan. The world in the not-so-distant future is slightly dystopian and ruled by villains splitting the world into different territories. Each is run by a different villain. This makes for interesting adventures, as some villains are businessmen, while others are simply madmen. The book feels like a combination of Mad Max and Escape from New York. When we first meet Logan, we are presented with the illusion of happiness, only to quickly learn the rules of the land. And boy are they learned. Few heroes remain, so it's stressing on Logan. When Hawkeye shows up with a secret mission, Vague as ever, Hawkeye convinces Logan to accompany him on a long journey across the United States. Can such a trip even be made in a twisted world by a pacifist berserker and a now blind archer? Not without consequences. So the writer of this book is Mark Millar, and he's known for writing some of the biggest comic book stories of the past 15 years. If you haven't heard of Civil War, Superman Red Sun, or Kick-Ass, they're his. He's also known to write a few poor stories that fall flat by the ending looking at you, Jupiter Circle, and Jupiter's Legacy Part 2. So where does Old Man Logan rank among his work? It's near the top. This story has a boatload of creativity, and as far as characters and where they would end up in a dystopian situation, the idea of some of the obstacles chosen to lay in Logan and Hawkeye's path are beyond innovative. We can all argue what is Millar's best book. We can even pick different answers for the top pick and receive little argument. This is one of those books. He gets an A for it. The artist is Steve McNiven. He's a popular artist with a good reason. He drew this and Civil War. The visuals of certain baddies is breathtaking. The use of panels as a device to surprise the reader with shocking appearances. The huge characters look even larger. The crazed look even more menacing, visually keeping the reader's attention in a setting that could have just been dirt roads and burned out buildings is key. McNiven has had me searching every scene and every background for more and more detail. He gets an A. The inker is Dexter Vines. Inking is some of the best inking, it's some of his best inking ever. This book pops because of the details added in by Vines. The shadows and the depth given to McNiven's art are second to none. This is how inking needs to be done. It gets an A+. The colorist is Maury Hallowell. He does a great job choosing which colors to use. Most of the issues are dark and drab. Hallowell makes the story easy to follow by giving the darkness to the correct layers. The violence is also over the top at times, and Hallowell adjusts to create bright effects on the action. Another A is coming. The cover. The cover to this trade has a feel to it like an old movie poster. Many characters shown in a collage that captures your interest instantly. It creates questions that the reader is likely to want answers to. It sells the book. We got another A. Guys, this book is just fantastic. It's A's across the board. If you haven't read it, you should. If you enjoyed the Logan movie, which is his, which the movie's loosely based off this book, you gotta check it out. Again, I've been Hyper Hippo for Capes and Scales podcast. I can be found on Twitter at Hyper Hippo. You can find us online for more content at capesandscalespodcast.com and on YouTube where you search Capes and Scales. Make sure you hit that subscribe button like, and comment. Let us know what you want us to review, if you enjoy the ruse, if you didn't. If you think I'm stupid for liking this book, let us know. Again, guys, thanks for checking this out, and have a great day.